Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is the Asus GTX 560Ti Direct CU2 video card. If you've seen our previous reviews of other Direct CU2 video cards, the cover box might look familiar. Asus uses the same cover for all their Direct CU2 uh, GTX 500 series video cards, but the difference of course lies in the label underneath. You can see this is the 560Ti Direct CU2. There actually has a top version also, which has a 900 megahertz overclock. What we have here is the 830 megahertz overclock version, which is about 10 megahertz or 8 megahertz over the NVIDIA reference. The NVIDIA reference, uh, the NVIDIA website lists the reference core clock at 822 megahertz, but some of the available beta cards that from other manufacturers will actually come at 820 megahertz. And, uh, this, although this one has a slight overclock of 830 megahertz, it has the super alloy power that we have seen in other Direct CU2 video cards, which allows it to be to overclock and much better compared to other um, video cards. And of course, to help with the cooling, as you're overclocking, you have the Direct CU2 cooler right there. You have a dual fan cooling. And uh, if you flip the box to the back, you can see that in a little bit more detail. You have a inset photo there. Uh, the direct CU, of course, refers to the copper heat pipes, which are directly uh, linked to the uh, core, so that the it have a faster heat dissipation compared to um, compared to other heat sinks, heat sink design, which has a plate and then the copper above it. And of course, you have the super alloy power, which is a combination of the, which is just a manufacturing, uh, rather the a marketing term for the VRM design of the GTX 560 Ti Direct CU2 video cards. You have high quality components which allow uh, allow the overclock to run much higher and provide longer lifespan by uh, through cooler operation. Of course we're going to take a look at that closer look at that later on once I open up the Direct CU2 Direct GTX 560 Ti Direct CU2 video card. And uh, also like other Direct CU2 video cards you have the voltage tweak option. And uh, actually in here it says that you can change it through the Smart Doctor software which is bundled with this package but actually I would suggest using the latest GPU tweak utility that was released at the same time as the GTX 580 Matrix Platinum ROG video card. It is much better and uh, has improved and is uh, much more convenient to use and now if you read through our previous reviews of those video cards of other Direct CU2 video cards and in this uh, review, you will see just how well that software overclock and, and how well this GTX 560Ti responds to overclocking. And uh, here in the far right, you have the uh, you have a diagram of what the connections are. You have the you have a mini HDMI connector, a and a pair of DVI connectors. And uh, let's look inside the package so we can see. What you can find inside, maybe accessories that will allow us to connect our video card to different various displays. Inside the cover box is a smaller black box. And, uh, let's pull it out and see. A much more uh, simple design. As you can see, it's very elegant looking, and you have the Asus imprint right there in gold. And if you flip it over, here you can find this little compartment right here are the documentation and uh, it's a speed setup the VGA driver and manual and the graphics card installation guide and multiple languages in uh, this compartment you have the accessories and uh, you have your D sub to DVI adapter a mini HDMI to HDMI, full-size HDMI adapter, and a pair of uh, four-pin Molex, two female four-pin Molex to six-pin power connector. And on the last compartment is the video card itself. Here you have the anti-static foam, and uh, inside there, and uh, let's just pull it out and take a closer look. Here's the 560Ti Direct CU2 video card right out of the box. And first thing you notice, of course, is the dual fan cooling design. And uh, if 
right out of the box, you can see the PCB is also different. Now, Asus actually makes their custom PCBs for their video cards, especially the Direct CU2 video cards. And uh, you have, here at the bottom, you can have the PCIe.0, and it has these uh, protective guards. Right in the back, you also find something similar for the DVI ports. You have the pair of DVI ports and a mini HDMI port. And right above it uh, are these ventilation holes dedicated for exhausting hot air. And uh, let's flip it here to the front. You can see it's slightly longer than a standard GTX 560 Ti by about, uh, I would say, half an inch or about uh, three quarters of an inch. Because of the larger heatsink shroud, the metal, the heatsink shroud is actually made of metal, so it's heavy. But uh, what Asus did was they used this. They have a this metal spline running along the side, so that uh, to see the the PCB does not bend down. And what happens with uh, most video cards with aftermarket cooling is they have very heavy heatsinks, so the PCB, the integrity of the PCB, was compromised and. Uh, having a spine there, a metal spine, helps with the rigidity and the uh, protects the traces from, from being compromised on your video card. And uh, here in the end, you have a pair of six pin power connectors. And uh, you actually can't see the direct CU2 cooling underneath, but uh, I'm going to open it up so we can take a closer look on what the Asus GTX 560Ti direct CU2 video card looks like underneath. Open it. I suggest using a precision screwdriver as these are quite small. And I would also suggest when you're unscrewing to unscrew in an in a crisscross fashion. Go. And uh, two more to go. Now because of the uh, thermal interface material it might take some sliding out and uh, also make sure to see that the where you removed the, the screws there are actually these uh, little protective guards I don't know if it's uh, it's actually I don't know if it, I think it's glued into place but just in case it flies off be careful because you will need that to put back these screws later on so it doesn't damage the PCB and uh, let's just slowly slide it out of place Make sure nothing, no other screws are in there. Might be slightly hard if your video card is cool and because uh, thermal interface material is typically hardens when uh, once it's not in use. Now, there we go. Just uh, took a little bit of wiggling, and here we have it. With the Direct CU2 cooler removed from the main PCB, you can see the Direct CU2 design. You have three direct copper heat pipes which are flattened and directly in contact with the core there's a lot of thermal interface material there and uh, there are actually two types of aluminum fins here just have these regular fins where the copper pipes stem to but the main one is actually a aluminum plate with fins underneath now the two separate fans cool these two separate fin sets of fins much more efficiently and uh, the fan is a uh, very five pin PLVM design well, because there are two two, uh, two fans in there. And uh, let's just move the PCB slightly so you can see. And you have your memory chips there, you're actually Samsung memory chips. And uh, we're going to take a closer look and I'm just going to remove these uh, these passive, passive heat sinks underneath to we can take a look at the entire uh, VRM circuitry of this uh, video card. This heatsink actually is uh, not screwed into place. There, there's a thermal tape underneath, so they might be might require some movement to remove. And uh, underneath, you need to make sure that the locks are removed before you can pull it out in place. And let's just slightly wiggle it. Doesn't damage any of the vital components, and there you go. Uh, the thermal tape has stuck a bit. See there. Uh, with the passive heat sink removed, we can see more of the VRM circuitry in detail. Here you have the super alloy power chokes, super alloy power capacitors, and super alloy MOSFETs, and you also have this voltage regulator right 
near the edge and these are actually uh, part of the total VRM circuitry which help you overclock your GTX 560 Ti much better than other reference designs and in here you also have these two fuses right near the power connectors for extra safety